complete the work and return it back to the trustees. So the court has upheld that and said, you cannot take over any temple for an indefinite period. You know what that means? Today, four lakh temples are under government control for years and years. And so, if I go to court and say, Tirupati should have been taken over for 83, 84 years, therefore, please strike down that original order and give it back. But the problem is, give it back to whom? I don't know who the owner of 80, 1933 was. There is some Hatiram Trust, but I don't know whether it belongs to them. So we were, Swami Dayanand, Saraswati, Pejavar Mat Swami and all, we are working together to see, to create a body which will accept all the temples from the government and then give it to some private management. And uh, that we are working and therefore I can tell you that as soon as that work is complete, not a single temple beyond three years will be in the hands of the government. <laughs> of course, Swami Dayanand Saraswati one day told me that you must scrap this uh, act itself. Why should it be uh, there? But uh, because he is a great saint and uh, I, of course he is no more, but he was a great saint and so he said it, so I have filed it. And it's possible that we will scrap the existing Hindu, uh, charitable, Hindu, Hindu religious institution and charitable trust or something, whatever the act is, HRNCE, that uh, uh, act should be replaced by some other act, which is more in keeping with the requirements of Article 25. So here again, what I did was to show that my fundamental rights under an article of the Constitution is being violated. So as long as you can show to the court that some fundamental right of yours is being violated or some law is being broken and that you have tried to correct it by going directly to the government but the government didn't listen, then you can do a PIL. So that's how I done these corruption cases. Uh, so, uh, corruption and of course, uh, in order to create, a, create a, a awareness on Hindutva, what was a great injustice, the Ram Temple. Ram Setu I have already explained to you. And now from Ram Setu, there is a slogan in Sanskrit, Asetu uh, Himalayam, that is from Setu to Himalaya. That constitutes our India. So now Setu I have done. So on the way to Himalaya, Ayodhya also. I will say that in the next election 2019, I'm not worried about this demonetization and uh, what uh, uh, yeah, GST. It is not going to affect our election prospects. Demonetization, the worst period was in March of this year. And UP elections were there. Uttarakhand elections were there. And everybody said, oh, long lines, people are giving you, uh, abusing you and all that. You are going to lose UP 100%. And what we found? We won 75% of the seats of the UP assembly. And it's not certainly due to some economic miracle that we have brought about. There was none. On the other hand, we are all in a defensive position as far as this. But, and we also committed one other, what was normally considered at that time as a folly. Out of 404 seats of the UP Assembly, we did not give a single ticket for any of the Assembly seats to a Muslim. Not because we didn't want to, but all the candidates who applied uh, didn't meet our criteria. So we said, sorry, we don't, didn't get good candidates, so no, no Muslim candidate. 
people said you are now bound to lose because 125 constituencies in the out of the 404 are uh, uh, you know Muslim dominated constituencies and you lose all of them when the results came out we have won 85 of them how did we win 85 because we said in the campaign when a women delegation from the Muslims came we told the women delegation we will definitely move to abolish triple talaq. You see, one rule in India is never stir up a woman, huh? because they... <laughs> and the Muslim men uh, were misbehaving with the women, they were calling them all kinds of names. And the women went on, uh, on a rampage. You know that Mahabharata war took place because Draupadi said, unless I get Dushasan's blood, I'm not going to let you go. And so war took place, Mahabharata war took place because of the anger of one woman. Even Ramayan would not have been staged and uh, Ravan would not have been killed. If Sita didn't insist when Ra uh, Hanuman came to Ashok Vatika and located Sita, and said, Ram is grieving for you, sit on my shoulder, I will take you to Ram. She said, no, all these women who have been kidnapped by Ravan, they will be left all alone. So Rama must come here, kill Ravan, then only I will come. So you see, <laughs> and women can do it both ways also. Kaike brought down the whole, <laughs> and Manthara, Manthara, another woman, so, and in God's cabinet also, Brahma has kept women happy because all the important portfolios is given to women. Education to Saraswati, finance to Lakshmi, <laughs> defense to Parvati. And to male gods is given only one portfolio, information broadcasting to Narad Muni. <laughs> so these women, Went on the campaign. Yes, Sonia is the, the other side, you see. <laughs> she is Tadaka, yes. <laughs> so the, these women, came, Muslim women campaigned and it divided the Muslim vote 50-50. And uh, we, we got the And plus, of course, the Shias also voted for us. So that strategy which I had envisaged in, in uh, 2014, that Congress has been dividing the Hindus and uniting the minorities. We will unite the Hindus and divide the minorities. <laughs> and I can tell you that if Ram Temple is built, 100% the Hindus will unite much more than before and will win the 2019 election. <laughs> and Ram, Ram Temple, originally the Ram, I mean the Babri Masjid was demolished by a mob. Well, we don't approve of it, so that's why there's a criminal case going on. Even in our own government, we have to be, we are being forced to prosecute Mr. Advani, uh, Muli Manur Joshi and so on. Painful, but law, rule of law is rule of law. Whether they may be innocent, they may be declared innocent. And of course, I know they are innocent. In fact, my argument to Muli Manur Joshi is, why are you defending yourself that you didn't do it? You demolished, say that I demolished that structure, but it was a temple. You know that since 1949, only pujas are going on inside the Babri Masjid. Idols were placed in the masjid. Masjid is a building for reading namaz. And if you don't read namaz in it, it is a building for something else. So it is a building, it was a temple. And when we demolished it, they, they, we had to take the idols out. And the Supreme Court allowed us to build a makeshift temple on the spot where we demolished the masjid. Anyway, the issue is that Ram Temple is a, is a symbolic factor for us. 500 years, the Hindus fought practically every year. 
Over the years, many thousands of Hindus died because they had demonstrations and demonstrations. Only after we got independence, uh, the Hindus one day in 1949 entered the masjid and put uh, idols there and the puja started. Then Jawaharlal Nehru put a lock on it. In 1986, his own grandson, Rajiv Gandhi, he ordered the locks to be opened. And puja started again inside. In 1991, of course, a mob demolished it. But question became that time before the Supreme Court, which was seized of the matter, is how to deal with this issue. There were uh, four parties which had filed suits over the years for possession of that area. Two were Hindu temple people. Uh, one is Nirmoyi Akhara and the other is Ram Janmabhoomi Nyas. They said it was our temple there which was demolished so it must be given to us. They had filed a suit. In the case of the Muslim, uh, the Sunni Waqaf board filed a petition saying that this was a masjid and the land was taken over by Babar and for 500 years it has been in the possession of uh, Hindus and therefore by adverse possession it belongs to us. So plus Jamaat Islami said the same thing. So the matter went before the uh, Allahabad High Court. In the meantime, P. V. Narasimha Rao, you know, he was uh, typical Telugu, which means very clever. <laughs> he, huh? Yeah. So he was asked by his government was asked by the Supreme Court it, during the course of the hearing. It's a constitutional bench which was hearing it. What to do about this? Ram Temple man, uh, issue now. And in 1994, they asked the government, please tell us what is your solution to this problem? It's been festering for 500 years. You tell us now. You're the government. In your tenure, this masjid was broken. So you have to, you over responsibility to tell us a solution. So Narsimharao got his solicitor general to file an affidavit, that means a sworn affidavit, that if it is ever shown that there was a pre-existing temple, which was there after that only a masjid was built, then we will hand over this land to the Hindus. So the Supreme Court said, okay, let us find out. So they issued a, a direction to the Allahabad High Court take all these suits of uh, Sunni Waqaf Board and Jamaat Islami and uh, and Nyas uh, uh, Akharas and uh, and uh, Janmabhumi Nyas etc. Take these four suits and you you conduct it. Let it not be at the magistrates level. Let it be at the High Court level. You hear the matter. In the meantime, determine whether there was an existing temple or not. And so the um, Allahabad High Court asked uh, the Archaeological Survey of India to decide. Archaeological Survey of India appointed two of the most famous uh, archaeologists, one Dr. B. B. Lal and another Mr. K. K. Mohammed of Kerala. These two people were appointed to find out. They then used all the modern techniques of earth imaging and so on. And finally, they also dug below uh, where Babri Masjid once upon a time stood till it was demolished on 6th December 1992. And when they dug, they found a huge Hindu temple below. So they gave a report that yes, there was a temple pre-existing the masjid. So strictly speaking on that basis, Narendra Modi's government should hand over this to the Hindus to build temple, saying that Congress party government 
has said that if there was a pre-existing temple, it belongs to the Hindus. But Modi says, let's see what the Supreme Court says on arguments. The matter went in 2010, the Allahabad High Court decided that Babri Masjid is where, by the faith of Hindus, Ram was born. Now the law is, this is the law and it's an international law, that courts don't decide what faith should be. Faith is decided by a substantial number of people. Now take for example where Christ was born. I don't know how many of you know, Christ was born in Bethlehem in a particular place according to the mother of the king of King Constantine of Rome who had a dream that Christ was born at this place and the Christian community accepted that. So what you see in Bethlehem is not history. It is just the dream of the mother of the king of Rome, King Constantine. So on faith, so many things, uh, Al-Aqsa mask that uh, Muhammad went up to heaven that way. These are all faith. You don't question it. As long as the faith doesn't violate any morality or public order or health. That's what our constitution says. So faith says that Ram was born there. And that's widely believed by Hindus. And so the Supreme Court, uh, the High Court said, this is, uh, uh, this is to be given to the Hindus to build a temple, a Ram Lala temple. And against that order, the Sunni Waqaf board and uh, the jamaat islami have come to the Supreme Court in 2010. And from 2010 till 2017, not a single step further was taken. For some reason, both parties didn't want the matter to come up. So one day I went and made a mention. So they all pounced on me saying, you're not a party. How did you get into this? Uh, so, you neither built a temple, nor uh, you are any descendant of Babar. So, how come you are committed? to it? Well, so I had to think of a way of how to get in. <laughs> so, I then came up with this idea. And that idea is a devastating idea because, and I'm convinced because of that idea, we are going to definitely win the case. I said, under Article 25 of the Constitution, I have a fundamental right to worship. And I, have, I want to worship Ram Lala, that is the uh, young, uh, young Ram. And on the spot where Ram, we believe, was Ram was born. But I'm not able to do so because there are so many restrictions that I can't even do my own archana. I have to carry my own chappals in my pocket. Uh, there's no place, there's no chappal rack or shoe rack. There's no drinking water. If people want to come in wheelchairs, there's no provision for wheelchair. You have to park to two kilometers away and walk in the hot sun. And so, so many difficulties. So either you remove those difficulties or get, let me build a Ram temple. This I posed to the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court was in, uh, naturally, this is an argument that my fundamental rights have been violated. Nobody has, before that, has raised the fundamental right question. The other two parties are saying this is our property. And the Hindus say this is our temple was there, this is our property. And the Muslims are saying Babur captured it and for 500 years it has been our property, it's the property. Now I also told the Supreme Court, which got completely, what shall I say, frightened by my argument, that the Supreme Court has repeatedly held 
that if there is a clash on an issue of fundamental rights versus an ordinary right, then fundamental rights will prevail. And these people are asking for the property. That's an ordinary right. It's not a fundamental right. So therefore, therefore I said, you don't have to hear the other side. Just check whether I have a fundamental right or not. <laughs> if you have a fundamental right, matter closed. You tell them to go home. There's nothing to argue. My fundamental rights will prevail. So this Chief Justice was totally taken aback. And he said, do you mind if I hear them anyway? So I have no problem. Because RSS leaders told me, try to bring this to a conclusion somewhere around July 2018. So, <laughs> because, because, because we Indians have a very short memory, <laughs> and so it should not be too much before the Lok Sabha election. So, therefore, the matters, and then the Muslim parties raised the question about translation of documents, etc. So from 5th December, it is starting, and it will probably be heard on a day-to-day -day basis. It's all a waste of time hearing their arguments and so on. In the meantime, I've done one more mischief. <laughs> I went through the records, and I was surprised to find that although Babar was a Sunni, but the man who built the masjid, his commander-in-chief, Mir Baki, was a Shia. So, and he appointed a, what is called as a supervisor, which in Urdu is called, Arabic is called, Mutwali. And Mutwali is a hereditary thing. So, I went on checking, I kept asking the police of Uttar Pradesh, whether the, the, the Mutwali's descendant is still alive, and we finally located him somewhere in, uh, down the Saryu River. And uh, we went to him and he said, this uh, is uh, there. Are you keen on, uh, are you keen on uh, uh, this masjid being built in where Ram was born? Or you don't mind building masjid anywhere else? Now you see, Saudi Arabia has, if you go to Google and type, demolition of mosques and Saudi Arabia you will get a whole list of mosques that the government of Saudi Arabia has demolished. Of course, Turkey is also demolished, Qatar is also demolished, Pakistan is also demolished. And Saudi Arabia demolished even the masjid which was built on the direction of Paigambar Muhammad, that is the prophet, in Makkah, to build a palace and a public toilet, you see. So, yes. And I asked the Saudi Arabian ambassador that how can you do this? He said, so why? Masjid is just a place to read namaz. And namaz can be read anywhere. In the drawing room, on the road, in the aeroplane, in the railway platform. And it is just a building to facilitate people to gather together and read namaz. And therefore, we believe it can be demolished, it can be shifted. And so I've got it from the Saudi, Saudi Arabians in writing that masjid is not a religious place. It is a place for assembling, for reading namaz, and it can be broken or it can be shifted. And I'm going to present to the Supreme Court that maybe the mobs had no right to demolish it, but now they can go somewhere else. And I will bolster this argument by saying that the real owners of this Babri Masjid they are Shias, and the Shias have agreed that they are ready to, uh, they, they have agreed to accept another spot where the Shia population is there, which is not in Ayodhya, but in the neighboring district of Ambedkar, called Ambedkar district. And therefore, they are ready for a consent order. And these Shia, uh, Sunnis, where are they come from? They don't belong here. And I checked the records to find that it was always the Shia Waqaf board which used to administer the 
masjid till 1944 in 1944 the uh, the uh, the sunnis with the growth of uh, jinnah and uh, lakat ali khan and and, uh, and others they, they they went to a city civil court where a, a sunni was a judge and got an order that even though this is a shia masjid Nevertheless, since the Sunnis also pray there, therefore it can be looked after by the Sunni Waqaf board. Totally illegal order. So now I've got the Shia Waqaf board to file also a petition in the Supreme Court. <laughs> that is a fraudulent order and we didn't have the guts to appeal against it earlier. But now since the matter is being considered afresh, we are putting petition that we are the real party, these people are all imposters that we struck off. So now, it is now very clear that the matter is such that we will definitely win this case. And <laughs> and just for the sake of argument, supposing we don't win the case, or a case they give some kind of a diluted judgment, what do you do? Then we follow Mr. Rajiv Gandhi on Shabanu case. The Supreme Court said, yes, maintenance allowed. He passed a law in parliament annulling the Supreme Court judgment. So we will get majority in Rajya Sabha in uh, April 2018. <laughs> And we, we will say, because Narsimha Rao said that uh, there is a pre-existing temple, therefore it should be now made into Ram Janmabhumi. And I wonder what congressmen will do. They will look blue in the face. How can they oppose their own government's uh, uh, decision? Uh, they may not like uh, Narsimha Rao, but the fact is that this is... So it's a... Uh, in your mind, there should be no doubt. I am going to start the argument process from the 5th. I will be probably the last one to argue. But I am telling you that around July, you will get the order. And Ram Temple will be built very fast because Ashok Singhal was smart enough to make all what is called as uh, pre, uh, prefabricated pillars and uh, columns and so on. And we, I, in three months' time, Ram Temple will be built and next <laughs> next year Diwali you can come and uh, I think uh, uh, Prakash Rao is able enough to organize the trip so that all of you will get a <laughs> premier entrance, premium entrance into the temple. So this is our symbol. You see, I had spoken to the Muslim leadership also. People like Ovesi also. Ovesi, of course, is a Sunni, uh, is a Shia. So he's, uh, a, you know, he's a little, uh, okay, I'll manage him. But, uh, <laughs> but the Sunnis, I spoke to them. And I told them, listen, you must understand one thing, that for 800 years we fought the Muslims and ultimately we won. The British came at the time when we were very tired out and therefore they continued for another 200 years. But ultimately we, we have recovered our country. The British in the Indian Independence Act, you see the British had to pass a law because there was only India, there was no Pakistan. So how did they create Pakistan? So they created this legal fiction of bringing in a bill in the House of Commons, Indian Independence Act in June 1947 and passed it in July 19th, 1947, in which in the, during the course of moving the bill, the British government said, our object is to create a Muslim-governed Pakistan and a Hindu-governed India. So if at that time our Congress leaders were not ready for this, all this business of 
secularism and composite culture, blah, blah, etc. We could have declared ourselves as a Hindu Rashtra in 1947 legally, but we did not. But the Constitution of India has all the Hindutva items in it. Article 48 says ban on cow slaughter. Article 44 says uniform civil court. Article uh, 351 says that Sanskrit vocabulary should be used in Hindi and not, uh, not uh, English or Arabic or, or uh, Persian words should be used. That official Hindi will be on Sanskrit. So there are all these Hindutva demands. Even Article 370, it says temporary provision. Please read the, our constitution. It calls, it calls Article 370 as temporary provision, which shall be removed, the article be removed, not by parliamentary vote, but by a notification issued by the President of India that Article 370 is no more. And who will give the notification draft? The Cabinet of India. So Narendra Modi's Cabinet passes a resolution and gives it to the President. He signs on it and issued it as notification. That's the end of Article 370. So why are you all worried about 370? I don't understand. It will take only 24 hours to remove it. When is going to happen? Uh, I'll keep it a secret. <laughs> First, Ram Temple. Then I will do 370. So, not before. Because all that 370 will give you is a right to go and buy property there. 35 is, a, is in the Supreme Court and you'll, you wait for the judgment for that. Uh, but Article 370 only gives you a right to buy, purchase land. And uh, land has already been purchased by Indians from the rest of India and mostly Marwadis. How? By power of attorney arrangement. The owner is still on writing in, in, in print. The owner is uh, a, a Muslim of uh, the Kashmir Valley. But the real owner is the man who holds the power of attorney. So by that device already uh, all the land that we wanted to buy has already been bought. So anyway, this 370 is not going to last very long. So whenever we want, we just need 24 hours notice. And the present uh, president is from our party and he's a lawyer. So therefore, Ram Temple I had sto told the Muslim community leaders that you have demolished 40,000 temples and we are asking for Ram temple and we are asking for uh, Krishna temple to be restored and Kashi Vishwanath temple to be restored. Three temples. <laughs> this is a decision which the RSS in a, in a meeting took place and passed a resolution. We don't want all 40,000, only three. So I said, this is a Krishna package for you. <laughs> so they, they said, well, what do you mean by Krishna package? I said, when Mahabharat war was about to start, Krishna went to Duryodhan. I said, take Hastinapur, take Indraprasth, be the king of both, but give five villages for the Pandavas. So he said, no, I will not, even the, you know, the land on the, uh, on the tip of a needle, I will not agree. And in the end, he lost Indraprasth, he lost uh, uh, Hastinapur, and he lost his life also. So I said, don't make us do that. So accept this Krishna package of three. <laughs> and I'm telling you that 80% and more of Muslims accept that this should be sorted out by a compromise way of this kind. So I, I, have no, I, don't, I don't foresee any difficulty in restoring all three temples back to its original glory. And this is all because of this PIL. Because now they know 
that I have played, I mean, this info, uh, there's no answer to my fundamental rights question. And that I've done the mischief of bringing in the Shias. And they are now the rival complaint, I, come, I mean, I'm a uh, plaintiff. And so, therefore, better do it in, in uh, you know, um, earn a good name and come to a compromise. Or, as OYC told me, that I cannot come to a consent order with you because people will say I've taken money from you. So you get an order from the Supreme Court. So I said then you, you bring in only low level uh, uh, lawyers, don't bring high class lawyers <laughs> and we'll win the case. So Ram Temple is certain. Two, the cases of corruption. Today I saw a speech given by the Prime Minister yesterday in Himachal, where he said Congress leaders are all, all out on bail. <laughs> and he mentioned National Herald. As you see in that um, uh, Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi both are on bail. Now how did this case come about? Now you can see where 420 really is in full bloom in this deal. There was a newspaper company called Associated Journals Limited, which used to publish National Herald. It was set up in 1937 by about 10 people, including of all parties, uh, 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 Rafi Ahmad Kidwai, Acharya Narendra Dev, Raman or Loya, etc., etc., and Jawaharlal Nehru. And Jawaharlal Nehru was chosen as his first chairman. After independence, Jawaharlal Nehru became prime minister. Uh, so he handed it over first to somebody other than his son-in-law, Feroz Gandhi, etc. But because government of Congress came, they started giving them land, concessional terms, etc. And slowly National Herald acquired 5,000 crores worth of property, prime property in Bandra, in Delhi, in Patna, in, in Bhopal, etc. So, in 2009, uh, 2008 to be exact, National Herald a Company Associated Journals Board of Directors rule, uh, decided and passed a resolution that we can't now liquidate our debt, which is 90 crores owed to Congress Party. And therefore, we are closing down. So they closed it down. Just then, Ms. Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi, Motilal Bora, and uh, Oscar Fernandez, and uh, Sam Petroda, and uh, Suman Dubey. These six people came together and created a private limited company called Young Indian. For just five lakh rupees, um, uh, uh, authorized capital. And after this setting it up in the first meeting, a resolution was passed that uh, the young Indian should acquire Associated Journals Private Limited. Now how to do it? So what was suggested is that one of the board of directors of young Indian and this company, by the way, is owned by Sonia Gandhi and her son because they have 80% of the shares. So, therefore, it is their company. And so, the board did has decided that Motilal Vora should go to Congress party and say that national, uh, the Associated Journals owes you 90 crores, but they have closed down. So, you're not going to get this 90 crores. So you assign it to us and we will give you 50 lakh rupees. Now how a 5 lakh company can give 50 lakhs, that's another issue of money laundering, I will not go into it just now. But so he went and spoke to Congress and it was easy for him to convince Congress because Motilal Vora was the director of Young Indian. But Motilal Vora was also the treasurer of Congress party. So Motilal Vora spoke to Motilal Vora. 
and got him to agree <laughs> that 90 lakhs, 90 crores would be assigned to the young Indian and for a payment of 50 lakhs. And Congress uh, passed a resolution in view of the fact that this was a deadweight loss for us, therefore getting 50 lakhs was a bonus, so we have accepted this deal. Now to convince the Associated Journals, so Motila Lora went to the board of directors and spoke to the chairman saying that you, can't, you have no money, you have closed down because of that. So what we suggest is for liquidating your debt, you issue 9 crore shares for 10 rupees each. So 9 crore shares, 10 rupees each means 90 crores value. And assign it to, I mean give it to us in, as payment for this loan. Okay, so uh, the, board, the chairman agreed. He said, very good, I will have it implemented right away. And who was the chairman? Motilal Bora. <laughs> so again Motilal Bora spoke to Motilal Bora and convinced him. <laughs> and now 9 crore shares was issued without asking any other shareholders. And 10 rupees was the price of the share in 1937. No new evaluation. There are 5,000 crores worth of property. Any of that property could have been sold and liquidated that uh, thing, that uh, debt, but they didn't do it because it's a conspiracy. And they passed it and 99 crores for 10 rupees each means totally 99.1% of the share capital of Associated Journals. So Associated Journals became the property of this private limited company. This is all fraud because this conspiracy is clear because Motilal Vora going to Motilal Vora to go Motilal Vora. That itself is a conspiracy. And second, it's a criminal breach of trust because the shareholders' uh, confidence in the, in the board was violated. It's a criminal misappropriation of property. <laughs> And therefore, and plus it is 420, because Motilal Vora going to Motilal Vora is 420. So I put all these four charges and filed it in 2013. It was at the time when the atmosphere in the country is that nobody can question Sonia Gandhi. She was almost like an empress. Even our prime minister used to shake before her, you see. Uh, so, therefore, I filed it. And I must say, one lady, new magistrate, had the guts to listen to this case. And I argued it, I showed it all. And finally, she issued summons. That is the first stage. When you issue summons, it means the magistrate is convinced that my case is prima facie true. And now they have a right to rebut, and that can only be rebuttal, can only be in the trial. So summons issued, they have to come, they will be arrested, and they, then the magistrate will decide whether to give them bail or not. It depends on whether I oppose or not. And so on that day, I think it was December, 19th, or no, February 19th of 2016, uh, Ms. Sonia Gandhi 
राहुल गांधी मोतीलाल बोरा आज 